You know what's the most annoying thing about photography? Backlight, like the one behind me. It makes my face look so dark. Everybody say hi to Jasmine. She's gonna be modeling for a tutorial today. Now, backlight is not the problem. The problem is this metering mode here, the average metering. Let me explain why it's the problem. All cameras have metering modes. The average metering mode symbol look like this on your camera. Let me explain why. Let's superimpose this on a photo that I just took of Jasmine. As you can see, the center part is actually your subject's face or head. And then you have this portion here, which is the foreground. And then you have this, the background. And that explains why your metering mode symbol look like this. So if your background is huge area and bright, it will confuse your camera thinking that, hey, this is a very bright location you're shooting. And then when you increase the shutter speed or reduce the ISO to make the camera darker, your subject's face will just look dark like Jasmine's face. She looks dark because your camera setting is dark, not because she has dark skin tone. So in conclusion, the camera's metering mode, the average metering mode gets confused, especially when it comes to bright background like this. You know what? You should head on to this website here. Check out our premium courses because one of the lessons in premium courses, I taught exactly why you get this problem when you're using the average metering mode. And we compare different camera to find out which one behaves better when it comes to backlight. The exposure mode on my camera now is aperture priority. And I know what you're thinking. I know you say that, hey, I can just make Jasmine's face brighter by increasing the exposure compensation on my camera by pressing this button here and then start compensating this to one and two thirds stop brighter than it's supposed to be and then take a shot. But I know you guys gonna go down to the comment section there and then start bitching saying that, hey, he's got a bigger studio light and everything is gonna look bright, so I'm cheating. You know what? Let's off this big studio lights, to be fair. Better now, All right? So don't go to the, com I know. If I say that, you're still gonna go to the comment section. So this is compensated to positive one and two third. Let's see how Jasmine looks like now. Great, as you can see in this shot, Jasmine's face is brighter. But then we have a new problem. If you look at the background, hang on a minute, I look dark now. Back to the light, there you go. The background of this photo now looks too bright. And that's a rule that I wanna share with you today. A rule that I created in flash photography called the famous five. Famous five number one says that the subject should be brighter than every other layer, including a background and the foreground. But if you look at this, bright background will always cause your viewers to look at the bright places first and not the subject first. And that's not good. So the background should be slightly darker than Jasmine. So how do you solve this problem? Simple. Just plug in the flash and let's fire a flash. That's what we're learning today. Well, before we start and go through the settings of the camera, let me explain how this concept works. The background is bright. So instead of shooting zero on your exposure compensation, try to compensate it as negative one or two thirds or whatever it takes to make the background look darker like this. But then Jasmine looks dark. It doesn't matter when the flash goes off, she's gonna look okay again because the flash hits her. And now the settings. I'm still on aperture priority. The aperture for a solo portrait like this, f2.8, my favorite number. ISO is 400. And what I do is I maintain my exposure compensation at negative one. So with the flash, I'm gonna turn this on and make sure that the mode is TTL. Here's a simple trick for you to learn this tutorial. If you have your flash on top of your camera, the easiest way to do this is to set it to TTL. It's ETTL, ITTL, regardless, it's TTL. That means it's automatic. Take the camera, focus on Jasmine, take that shot. And then you get this shot. Well, her exposure looks okay. But if you zoom in, I'm going to teach you how you know that your light is hard. You'll notice that the shadow has a very defined outline. And also, you have highlight all over her face. When you see these two things, that means your light it's just too harsh. So how do you make the light softer? And that brings us to famous five number two, which says that the bigger the light, the softer the light. So all we need to do is make this flash bigger. So how do you make this flash bigger? 
You can use this and look really fugly, or you can swivel the flash head to bounce off the wall at the side and behind Jasmine. It is not the bouncing that makes the light bigger. It is the surface area behind me at that corner. That's Jasmine's new light source. No more the flash. So I've got this here. You must be thinking like, why at this angle? Simple. Take a look at Jasmine now. She parts her hair there. So I do not want to have shadow coming from this side or anywhere else. So it's this angle. So no change on the settings. Okay, change your pose a little bit, Jasmine. That's nice. Like that. Good. One, two, go. Wow. That's how you soften the light tremendously. Compare these two pictures. The hard light on TTL and a soft light bouncing off a bigger surface area. I bet you like what you learned in this short tutorial and that's what we are famous for. Straightforward, direct and very effective learning. If you like this, head on to our e-learnings here on this site. Check out our collections of e-learning, particularly the e-learning flash photography. And at the same time, check out our premium courses where you get wide genre of photography topics uploaded every week on our e-learning site. And if you are serious about making photography your career and income, check out our online ProCert program where we train you to be a certified professional photographer in as quick as one to three months. Head on to our website here. I look forward to see you on our e-learning website. Simple. And that's what we're going to learn to do today. <laughs> you know, it bloody happens all the time. Right, they have this thing about filming is that whatever that can go wrong and whatever has not go wrong will go wrong during filming. Where you can get yourself fully certified is an... <laughs> Maintain the smile, huh? Always look at the camera only, huh? She, she looked at you. Yeah, time. yeah, I know. I know they do that one. Mm -hmm. They fail to realize I'm married. <laughs> Just look at the camera, don't change it. <laughs>